Hey guys, um, before we get started I want to make a programming note, if I may. Um, most of my videos are recorded in 720 uh, because a lot of you guys don't have like unlimited data and a lot of you guys watch me on mobile. See on YouTube we have an analytics page and we can go back and we can look to see like how you guys view us, what, what operating systems you use, are you mobile, are you on Android, are you on iOS, are you, you know, using desktop. We can see that just by numbers. We can't see you, but we can see, you know, a percentage of iOS, percentage of Android, um, you know, things like that. When somebody who's like attentive to their channel, and you notice I really try to comment to most of you guys, uh, if I can, I really try to. Um, I also pay attention to what makes it where you guys can view me efficiently. And if I record in 1080, um, that's a larger file for you guys to stream. If I record in 4K, that's a much larger file for you guys to stream. And so a lot of you guys are going to have data issues with your data plans. Um, also, uh, a lot of companies like cell phone companies and stuff like that, are going to what they call unlimited data plans but what they're doing is they're giving you unlimited data to like search the web to go to like www.dansvlog.com but as soon as you go there and you know you donate your money that's great that's all that's all um, free data I guess you could say um, but as soon as you go to YouTube or uh, Twitch or or Facebook um, Twitter and you start streaming videos that are on those platforms, then they give it to you in DVD quality. So you're not even viewing it in high def. So for those of you that have unlimited data, unlimited data, and you're saying, hey, Dan, record in 1080 or 4K, which somebody said to me last week, and I appreciate that, um, I had to remind him and let him know, hey, the reason why I don't do that is because most people with unlimited data, if not already, are going to have DVD quality streaming only. They're not going to have um, high def downloads. So that's kind of oxymoronic for me to take the time to have such large files to have to edit and render, what it's called rendering, um, and become a video, become a movie and then upload. And you're talking a 30 minute video in 1080, takes about six hours to render five hours to render so once I make it a video and I have all my edits done then I go save file as a video and I want it saved in 1080p um, it'll take about four to five hours for it to save then I have to come back and watch it and make sure that it's good um, no glitches and then I have to upload it and then I'm uploading a large file to YouTube and that all takes time I can do it far more efficiently in 720 you can stream it far more efficiently in 720 um, and it takes up less data. So if you don't have unlimited data, the reason why I keep it in 720 is because I'm taking up a lot less of your data which allows you to view more. If not me, then everybody. And so that's why I record mostly in 720. I tried it in 1080 and I noticed it's just too big of a file. It's just not worth it for what we do. Um, we're not doing art, you know, we're not doing macro filming here and stuff like that, real up close stuff. You know, I mean, yeah, I want it to be good quality, and that's why I do it in 720. Uh, 720, 30 frames per second. There are times I have some 1080s, uh, mostly with cell phone video, and mostly they're small videos. They're going to be under 20 minutes, under 15 minutes, and then I can do those 1080. Uh, but I don't, I don't want to do large files for you guys and stuff like that. So just, just to let you know, and any other lawn channels that are watching me, uh, it's just something for you to think about when you're doing videos. Um, think about your viewers and think about, you know, all over the world these people uh, are watching us and they might not have the ability to stream us, which is why they have to only go fast through it and get out quick. And that hurts you as a channel. That hurts, you know, that, you know, if you follow your analytics, you know that's not good. Um, you want people to be able to watch your video or YouTube will think that you suck if they're clicking in and clicking out. So just food for thought. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about today before we get started is um, basic equipment versus commercial equipment, sort of, sort of, versus, uh, versus intermediate equipment. 
and I use basically what I would consider intermediate equipment. But I want to show you how you can start small and go big. You know, you don't have to jump right in. Here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Um, this right here is about a $600 machine. Okay, this is the hedge trimmer. What is this? The H HLK or something like that? HL100K. This is a four mix engine. Okay, and it's uh, it's the got the articulating head on the end here. This is the small shaft. They also have the larger shaft if you want for higher reach. But you see, it's completely articulating here, up and down, so you can reach things. You can stand like this and get the top of bushes, you know, that are way up high. Um, you can go like this, and you can be standing up, and you can do like really low stuff like this, you know. Um, I know I'm a little bit close in the video, but, uh, and then, you know, you can just do your basic like this, and you guys have seen me use this a lot, but this is like 600 bucks, $600 for a hedge trimmer, you know what I'm saying? And you guys could be like, dang, that's a whole lot of money. Well, that's something to aspire to, but that's not necessarily something you have to get right away, and that's what I wanted to show you. This was a hedge trimmer I got at Home Depot. This is the Echo HC152. I got this probably four years ago. Uh, before I even had a YouTube channel and I was just doing yards around the neighborhood uh, in my own yard okay this this was like uh, gosh well under 300 bucks if I say 229 at Home Depot that's probably what this cost this is the HC 152 okay it's just a, a good echo hedge trimmer it's got the double-sided blade so you can go back and forth and cut it all down nice. I mean, it's a nice machine. It gets the job done, and it gets it done inexpensively. And this machine, I'm going to use today on one, two, three houses. We're going to do of the five houses that I, I have to cut. Three of them, I'm going to use this on. Maybe the fourth, the lady down the street with the herbs that are in the um, planters, where her mother came out and beat me up with an umbrella. Not really, but I exaggerate. Um, she told me not to mess with her planters because she's got herbs and, and stuff uh, in her planters now. So I don't know if I'm going to trim those bushes or not. If I don't use this, I might get some of the big stuff with this. So, I mean, here you go. For less than 250 bucks, you can get out there and you can do yards with this. Something just like this. It's all you need. All right. Now, the next thing is like backpack blowers. Everybody wants to have a backpack blower. Everybody thinks a backpack blower is the shit and that's what you gotta have to have a lawn business and all this stuff. And man, let me tell you something. I had a backpack blower and then I wanted a backup and I got the, the steel BG86. This little thingy. And you've seen video and I'll, I'll link to it up here where I have this thing propelling me down the road on a skateboard and I have two of these on a scooter board with the handle I'm doing 20 miles an hour with two of these never kicking, uh, never having to kick. It, it, it'll start you from a dead stop and get you to 20 miles an hour, even climbing a hill, leaving my neighborhood. I got it all on video. Um, this right here was 250 bucks for this blower versus a standard backpack blower, uh, like a halfway decent one, is going to cost you over 400 bucks. Now you can get like your cheaper no-name brands at Home Depot or Lowe's and stuff like that. I've used them. and. I gotta tell you, these have more power than those cheap ones. So now, if you start getting into like a $500 backpack blower, now you got $500 backpack blower. You could buy two of these for one $500 backpack blower. Do you need the backpack blower? Nope. Is it nice? Yes. Sometimes. But it's not needed when you're doing a lot of residential. And that's, I did a video back in like 2016 that showed that. Um, you're always dealing with cars, going between cars going under cars, blowing, and the handheld blower makes it really nice to walk up to a door, blow the door so it goes back and it blows back to you, and you can easily kick your wrist around, and, and it takes a lot of movement off your back, and swinging and, and all that. Having a handheld blower, it's all in your wrist, and these BG86s for 250 bucks is a lot of power. It really is. I'm not sponsored by steel or anything like that. I just like steel. Um, and steel has three service centers right close by to me, so I like steel for that reason alone. Um, but this BG86 for residential work, um, when I had my backpack blower, I had the um, 
gosh, was it a BR350 maybe? It was like a, about a $400 backpack blower, a steel. I think it was a BR. I, I can't remember. It's BG. I, I can't remember what it was called. Uh, but it wasn't the most powerful backpack blower, but, but it worked. And it was more powerful than this. But I found myself grabbing this off my trailer before I would grab the backpack blower because it was just quicker, easier, more efficient. And it just made more sense around cars and walkways and back porches with patio furniture to just use this uh, than a backpack blower. So, yeah, backpack blowers have their place in this industry. Um, you know, if you got wide open area and like blowing leaves across a yard and stuff like that in the fall. And you can work up to that. And I highly, highly recommend that you do. But to get started, that's who I'm talking to right now is the side hustle guy who just wants to get out there and make a little extra money. This something like this is all you need. Now, you can go cheap. If you go cheap, you're going to get cheap. This is $250. This is about uh, about 150 bucks less than a decent backpack blower. So if you're like, ah, I need a blower, it's like 400 bucks. 250 bucks. This will get you out there. This will get you working, and this thing kicks butt. All right. It's just something to think about. And, and it's not like don't get a backpack, but don't wait and think that you have to get a backpack. Get this next season. Get a backpack if you need it. All right. The third thing I want to talk about is like your weed eater preferences and stuff like that. I like to use the FS100 or the, yeah, the FS100 RX. That's a four mix steel weed eater that you've seen in the last few videos that I've, I've been using. I've been edging with it. It's got a longer shaft. It's about four or five inches longer and it's just more comfortable to me. Uh, that weed eater alone is the same price as buying a combi unit like this the km90r okay this is also a four mix which means it's low torque it does a it does a good job this is an old trailer mount don't worry about that um, it's got low torque so you don't have to be wound up with the throttle uh, it'll get through thick stuff and you can edge and you can weed eat and you can do all that with your weed eater attachment so when you have this weed eater attachment right here like i said when this goes in here it's about three or four inches maybe shorter than the FS100 RX that I really, really like. But if you don't know the difference, if you've never had a weed eater with a long shaft and you're just out there to go buy a weed eater and you need an edger and you need things, then I would say, hey, don't go to Home Depot and buy three pieces of, I don't want to say pieces of shit because that's not fair, but don't, don't go out to Home Depot or Lowe's or a big box store trying to save some money buying non-commercial brand um, equipment where you're going to have to buy three of them if you can go to steel or echo maybe red max um, and you can get even husqvarna has a pro line uh, where you can get the combi unit like this the, for combination and this power head with the weed eater is about the same cost as just the one weed eater that i've been using in the in the um the other videos but then if you need a chainsaw then you gotta go out and you gotta buy a chainsaw. I still got Johnny's chainsaw. Again, guys, you let me down last time and you told him. Don't tell him. You go out and you buy a chainsaw for four or five hundred bucks, right? And you turn around. If you have the combi unit, you can get this chainsaw right here for less than three hundred bucks. And guess what, guys? For a side hustle, residential type deal that you're doing, I mean, you're not a tree surgeon out here. You're just cutting grass and you might need to trim some bushes. It's about the damn same size. This is a, this, I could see from the sun. This is a 12 inch and I think this one's a 14 inch. I mean, come on guys. Ladies, does two inches really matter? Disregard. All right, so you get this right here and you get it because you got the combi unit. And the combi unit costs about the same price as a good quality weed eater. Okay, but this combi unit, if you get a cheap weed eater, then you gotta go get a cheap chainsaw and you're gonna end up getting maybe a cheap edger if you don't wanna edge with your weed eater. Um, and when you get the combi unit, in time, you don't have to save up to get one of those really long hedge trimmers because the combi unit 
also comes, you can also buy the hedge trimmer attachment that goes in here. That goes from about right here, would be just the attachment, and it has the articulating head just like this. Okay, but you don't have to spend 600 bucks on this because you already got the power unit. You just spend about, I think it's like 278 or around 300 bucks for the hedge trimmer attachment only. And then that connects right here. 600, 300 for the attachment. One power unit. So you have one power unit that does your weed eating, it does your edging, and you can get the straight shaft edger or you can get the curved shaft edger. I highly recommend the straight shaft edger. And that's coming from a guy with decades in the industry who's always used the curved shaft. Straight shaft, this is the way to go. Um, one power unit, tree pruner, weed eater, edger, hedge trimmer attachment, which I don't have, but I want to get. And that's it. You now, this right here, with that blower right there, eliminates this, eliminates this, pretty much eliminates this, eliminates this. That's it, that's all you need, right there. That's your basic equipment but good quality basic equipment. So you're saying, oh, I can't afford steel, I can't afford good Echo, I can't afford good Husqvarna. You can, if you do it in pieces and you do it right. So to get you out the door, maybe in your garage or your carport right now, you might have some cheap ass crap that you're mowing your yard with. That's fantastic as you pick up people and say, I need a better weed eater, then this is where I want you to remember Dan. I want you to remember what I'm telling you. Don't go out and spend 350 bucks on a weed eater that's only a weed eater if you could spend $400 on a weed eater that you can then take apart and very easily for 180 bucks get the edger attachment or whatever the hell this thing costs. But you don't have to go and buy an edger because now you just buy the attachment and in time when you got to get rid of your battery powered um, hedge trimmer or whatever you have as a homeowner your corded hedge trimmer that you're using at customers houses and it's just garbage then you could just buy the attachment that, that goes, goes in here and they also have a pole that goes here um, I think it's a three foot or a four foot extension pole and then you can put your your pruner on so you could be trimming trees as high as a freaking light pole from the ground you know if, 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 if you want so this right here boom there's your basic equipment to get you out the door just efficiently, slowly build up to name brand. Do what you got to do to get started, but when you're about to make those purchases into decent equipment, combi units, man, regardless of the brand, just make sure it's good quality brand, name brand, and it's close to you. This internet buying of equipment, I, I don't like that at all. Make sure the service center is close to you. The warranties are good. Steel has unlimited shaft and gear warranty. So if you break your shaft or you break your gears, it's unlimited. All right, they're gonna, they're gonna replace it for you right away. Okay, and then you eliminate all that. And then this is all you're carrying around. This is it. There, there's your lawn business right there. Now you just need a lawn mower. And there you go, all right? Um, as far as lawn mower is concerned, I mowed for years with that Troy Built TB360 and it was great. It did a great job, but it's cheap. Um, I had to weld the deck and I replaced a lot of stuff on it. I'm mechanically inclined. I can do that and if you're going to be in this business, I suggest you get mechanically inclined as well. But if you can't do that, if you don't know how to do that stuff, then you know you might want to consider something a little bit better or use it until you can't anymore and get yourself something better. Um, $3,000 walk behind mowers are great. That's something to work up to, but don't stop because you can't afford it. If you can go and get yourself a $500 uh, $600 super recycler or like my $650 Honda um, if you can get something like that nice powerful motor good name brand good warranty local to you then go ahead and get that and then you can build up to you know if you want to go into like your $1,200 um, I think what I think they got the time masters reduced in price now I man I think they're like what nine something or a thousand um, they really come down in price I don't really like them too much. They didn't work good in thick grass uh, for me, but uh, people still swear by them. So, you know, whatever. But get out there. Here you go. And get yourself a decent mower. And you got years of income right here.
years of income right here. Never have to make another purchase again. And then you can always consider purchasing a second combi motor, um, just the motor, just the power head, uh, if you, you know, feel like this one's getting tired after time. I've had this now for two years. It's still running like a champ. Um, it's getting a little bit hard start and it's feeling a little bit sluggish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cover off and I'm going to check to see if it has the spark arrestor in there. That'll be a different video and I did a blower one um, and uh, see if that spark arrestor might be getting clogged up uh, and I'll just go ahead and chuck that. So that's it. All right guys, so really important man, just your basic equipment versus commercial equipment versus cheap equipment. That's just some advice for you guys to get yourselves out there, okay? Cool. I'm going to go make 200 bucks today cutting five yards. One, two, three, four, yep for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Check out dansvlog.com with a V, www.dansvlog.com. Um, we're at like 3200 and something dollars right now to the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital for this year alone. Uh, so we have more than doubled last year where we're at right now. So really exciting things uh, going on there. That marathon's coming up November 4th and 5th in Savannah. I hope to see you guys there. I appreciate you guys, I appreciate your time. And I appreciate your comments, so smack the like button, drop a comment, let me know what you think, tell us about your equipment, maybe some experience with some brands that you had, try to keep it clean. We got young people watching this channel too, all right? Uh, so I'll see you guys on... Come here, the whistle.